You know, ever since I was a little kid, I've always heard creepy stories of people, books, movies, and in modern cases, video games predicting the future. The Simpsons has been doing it for years, but you want to know what's crazy? Even though this isn't related to video games, in 2008, an author by the name of Sylvia Brown, in her book, The End of Days, on page 312, says, In around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes. And what is happening in 2020? That is insane. I'd say we could ask Sylvia what she was talking about back in 2008 when she said this, but unfortunately, she passed away in 2013. Now to get back on topic here, if y'all find the video enjoyable, informative, and you just learned something new from it, please click thumbs up. If you want to see a part two, let's go for 2,000 likes. Please go ahead and do it right now. Thank you, and let's get started. Number 8. So, in 2011, there was a game that released called Homefront. This is a modern first-person shooter. The plot actually revolves around a unified North and South Korea that have become a dangerous superpower and tensions are super high. Well, what this game predicted was that former leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-il, would pass away and his son Kim Jong-un would rise to power and succeed his father and in turn uniting North and South Korea into the Greater Korean Republic. And that hasn't happened yet, but this game that released in early 2011 said that Kim Jong-il was going to pass away, his son was going to take over. Well, at the end of 2011, that happened. Eerie little coincidence, but things get even crazier. So within this game, however, there is something very eerie that's very relevant to what's going on right now. It's called the Knoxville Cough. The Knoxville Cough originated in Knoxville, Tennessee, but it's the start of an Asian bird flu pan Democratic Party. I can't say that word or else YouTube will just demonetize the video. They censor things like this and you guys probably won't see it. So anyways, that happens in 2022 alongside the collapse of the United States financial system. Now, you want to know where things get pretty creepy? Well, I found out about Homefront and everything that it kind of predicted from this article from 2017. And in this article, they say the game is set in 2027. So hopefully it isn't right about anything else. And they were talking about the North Korea stuff. And then the last line after that says, Homefront's plot also includes the predicted collapse of the United States financial system in 2022, along with an Asian bird flu epididymis in the same year. That, my friends, is super eerie. Number seven, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. So this game released back in 2001, and it was the first entry into the Ghost Recon series. However, the game also happened to focus on a conflict between Russia and Georgia, not the state in the United States, but other Baltic states in that region. With Russia trying to bring the former Soviet countries back under its control, this all occurs when a Russian nationalist desires to rebuild the Soviet Union. Well, what's pretty strange is that this game is set in 2008, but it came out in 2001, and ironically enough, that's the very same year that an actual conflict between Russia and Georgia actually broke out. Now, like Call of Duty, Tom Clancy's work is also chocked full of politics, military strategy, and things like that. So, I guess it isn't too surprising that sooner or later, something like this would come true. But what's more alarming is the accuracy of the year of the conflict. Number six. So in 1990, there was a game that released called Smash TV, and this game basically predicted the rise of reality TV, and astounding 10 years before any shows of that caliber would actually make their debut. So released in 1990, the game is actually set in 1999 with a futuristic theme revolving around televised gladiator matches. Players would have to enter real life or death fights in an arena, which was broadcast as a reality TV show, and millions would tune in to watch the these battles. Well, the premise is actually pretty accurate with what would happen in the early 2000s with the growing popularity of reality TV, with millions easily tuning in each week to watch their favorite reality TV shows. It's also pretty specific, showing that the contest-based shows where contestants were tried way outside of their comfort zone uh, were highly popular. I used to watch in the early 2000s Fear Factor, but back then there were also shows like Survivor, The Amazing Race, and so many more that are kind of similar in a way, not as far as Gladiator, Battle to the Death matches go, but like I said, doing things out of your normal comfort zone. 
Number five, Mercenaries 2 predicting the United States oil rig nationalization by Venezuela. So this game released in 2008. And the game is set in Venezuela, and it's coupled with a pretty obvious allusion to the president at the time. And it was enough to get a rise out of Hugo Chavez back in 2008, where he claimed that the game was propaganda designed to garner support for an invasion of the country by the United States. The game also depicted its president trying to gain control of an American oil platform. Well, Hugo Chavez was indeed nationalizing sections of the oil industry by paying off U.S. companies at the time when Venezuela had the monetary means to do so. However, Mercenaries 2 predicted in 2008 what would actually happen in 2010 when the Venezuelan government said screw it and they went ahead and seized the assets which referred to 11 drilling rigs that were U.S. owned without any compensation. Number four, Command & Conquer Red Alert 2. So I've actually talked about this one on the channel before, but it's pretty interesting. So the box art for this game features the Twin Towers, the Statue of Liberty, fireballs, and an airplane that looks like it's flying into what would be one of those buildings. But you can tell that's not what's happening. There's little paratroopers jumping out the back. But anyways, this game released on October 23rd, 2000. 11 months before what would happen in 2001 the game's box art it was actually pulled from the shelves the box art was redesigned and then it was re-released but the accuracy of this and the timeline of it being 11 months from when this box art came out until what would really happen is pretty spooky if you ask me Number three, this is another one that I've talked about on the channel before in those videos that I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you can find the link down below in the description. But there's a game called Deus Ex, which released in 2000. And in this game, you can notice not only is the Statue of Liberty toppled, which hasn't come true yet, hopefully it never does, but along the New York City skyline, there is something missing, and that would be the Twin Towers. So remember... This game came out only a year before those attacks took place, and for whatever reason, the Twin Towers were removed from the New York City skyline. But you want to know what's pretty interesting? The developers of this game actually came out and said that they didn't include the towers in the game because of memory constraints. But these aren't real modeled buildings. But out of everything they could have removed, they removed the most prominent feature dominating the New York City skyline. If it was for memory constraints, they could have just removed some smaller buildings that nobody would have noticed, but instead, they didn't. Number two, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. A game that released in February 2013 actually accurately predicts the campaign slogan of Donald Trump saying, Make America Great Again. So, the protagonist of this game, Raiden, comes face to face with Senator Stephen Armstrong towards the end of Metal Gear Rising. The antagonist then utters the slogan, They'll make America great again. And then he goes on a spew and a monologue about everything that he would do to make America great. But the fact that that became an official presidential slogan I think is a pretty interesting prediction right there in video games and number one i guess i clickbaited y'all a bit not really just kidding but this isn't a video game it's a card game and it's an illuminati card game that released in 1995 now the premise of the game itself seems to be a little bit confusing to me i've actually wanted to make a video on this alone since early 2017 just haven't found the right way to do it so we're going to talk about it in this video this card game released in 1995 there's different illuminati groups and basically you're fighting to be the head honcho and the big ruler of all the other groups but in this game there are cards included and a lot of these cards have well accurately predicted things that have come true or been very similar for instance in this game remember that came out in 1995 there's a card with the twin towers on them and as you can see here well we all know what happened and we can tell what's going on here we also see the pentagon same thing we know what happened we also see some stuff with police officers that's pretty relevant to what was going on a few months ago and kind of what's going on in the United States right now. And then the biggest one of those all, a quarantine card. That is crazy. And alongside that, it's coupled with like a population reduction card. So obviously the game is centered around conspiracies and things like that. But the thing here is these conspiracies from 1995 weren't relevant or anything at all until modern days. So this game over 25 years ago seems to have predicted what's going on. And uh, I'm kind of scared because hopefully it doesn't predict anything else.
But anyways, those are eight instances of video games and just games in general predicting the future. I'm sure I missed out on a ton, and I'm sure there's a ton more, and there will be tons more to come. So keep an eye out. The games you're playing right now might just be predicting something that's going to happen in the future that might not be so good. So anyways, thank y'all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, and if you want to see more like it, well, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe with those notifications on. Show a little bit of love. I do appreciate it. But anyways, thank y'all for tuning in. I'm Zach Cox. Love you all, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.